Welcome to a new episode from English Plus Podcast. This episode is about word power. We will learn about an interesting topic, and that is about rockets. And then we will learn about 10 new words from the context of our story. We will learn about application, catapult, cumbersome, discharge, engulf, leverage, practical, surmise, transition, and vent. Remember, if you want to keep those words in your active vocabulary bank, you need to practice. And we got you covered. You have all the practice you need on our website, EnglishPlusPodcast.com. All you need to do is take the link you can find in the description of the episode. You will go to the custom post we created for this episode. You will find interactive activities, a PDF downloadable worksheet, everything you need to practice and to add these new words to your permanent active vocabulary bank. So now without further ado, let's start talking about our word power episode and let's learn about the rocket's red glare. In the 17th century, Sir Isaac Newton published his third law. For every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. If you have ever rowed a boat across a quiet lake, you experience Newton's law in action. The action of pushing the oars in one direction propelled the boat in the opposite direction. This simple rule of nature is the basis for the rockets that catapult both bombs and people into the air. The first mention of rockets appeared in various Chinese writings of the 13th century. Several writers report rockets being used to drive off Mongol invaders. Why rockets were invented in China is anyone's guess. Some historians surmise that the high levels of sulfur and potassium nitrate in the soil may have been accidentally kicked into a campfire, resulting in an explosion. The transition from explosion to rocketry required an additional step. When this explosion is created in a hollow tube that is capped on one end, the force of the explosion is vented through a single opening. This action in one direction moves the tube in an equal and opposite direction. The force of the discharge can be increased or decreased by widening or narrowing the opening. This principle can be demonstrated with a garden hose. The smaller the opening, the greater the force of the escaping water. As with the 13th century Chinese, the first application of this technology in Europe was in weaponry. The ability to send balls of fire at a distant enemy offered a clear advantage in battle. The problem was accuracy. On land, the cannon provided greater leverage for an enemy because its aim was more precise and its performance more reliable. Moreover, the equipment required for launching rockets proved too cumbersome to move and set up under fire or in bad weather. However, it was at sea that the rocket proved itself to be a practical and effective weapon. The huge canvas sails and tarred hull of an enemy ship offered a perfect target. A single rocket could engulf a ship in flames in a matter of minutes. As the accuracy of rockets increased, they began to play a part in ground warfare. The V-1 and V-2 rockets developed by the Germans in World War II terrified London. Today's intercontinental missiles with their atomic warheads are some of the most feared weapons in history. More recently, people have replaced warheads and the rocket has become the preferred method of space travel. So, that was our story about rockets and how they started. Maybe all started with Newton's laws, maybe all started with the Chinese, maybe Newton knew something about the Chinese rockets and he drew from it, nobody knows. But as usual, we're not here to discuss what happened as much as we are here to learn some interesting words from the context of the story that I shared with you. Our very first word is catapult, C-A-T-A-P-U-L-T. Now, in the story, we said this simple rule of nature is the basis for the rockets that catapult both bombs and people into the air. So what is the meaning of catapult? If someone or something catapults or is catapulted through the air, they are thrown very suddenly, quickly, and violently through it. 
So here we're talking about people or bombs. Of course, it's not that violent or random or quick or sudden. No, it is obviously calculated and everything, but this is the meaning of catapult. And catapult on its own is a device, as a noun actually, is a device for shooting small stones. And it was used in old warfare, especially as a siege weapon. But our word here, catapult, is a verb. And as I told you, if someone or something catapults or is catapulted through the air, they are thrown very suddenly, quickly, and violently through it. And that's actually what happens when people travel into space. It is not that smooth ride. It is very difficult. And that's why astronauts go through a series of very difficult training to be able to endure this sudden and quick and violent throw into the air. Anyway, that was our word catapult. Remember, it's C-A-T-A-P-U-L-T, -A -A catapult. Our next word is surmise. Now, let's see how we used it in the text. Now, we said why rockets were invented in China is anyone's guess. Some historians surmise that the high levels of sulfur and potassium nitrate in the soil may have been accidentally kicked into a campfire, resulting in an explosion. If you surmise that something is true, you guess it from the available evidence, although you do not know for certain. So it's like an educated guess. We're not talking about just a guess without having any facts or any evidence. No, here you have some evidence, but it is not for sure. You don't know for certain. If you surmise that something is true, you guess it from the available evidence, although you do not know for certain. So here, when we said some historians surmise, because nobody really knows. They surmise that the high levels, you know the story. So that is the word surmise. And before we move to the next word, how do we spell surmise? S-U-R-M-I-S-E, surmise. Now our next word is transition. Now in our story, we said the transition from explosion to rocketry required an additional step because first it was just an explosion, then it moved on to become a rocket. So there was a transition. What is the meaning of transition? Transition is the process in which something changes from one state to another. So changing from explosion, just an explosion, to rocketry, to using this power into building rockets. The transition, the change, required an additional step. So that is the word transition, T-R-A-N-S-I-T-I-O-N, -I -I transition. Then we have the next word, vent. Now, in our story, we said the force of the explosion is vented through a single opening. Here we're talking about how a rocket works. So the force of the explosion is vented. What is the meaning of vent, which is V-E-N-T, by the way? Now, a vent is a hole in something through which air can come in and smoke, gas, or smell can go out. Because obviously, if you don't vent the explosion, it will explode in place. It will not be propelled into space or into the air. But this small vent helps the rocket travels. Now, of course, nowadays they know exactly where to hit and they're very precise about that. But this is the basic thing. You need to vent the explosion to have a rocket. If you don't vent the explosion, it will be just a bomb that will be detonated in place. But there is a very interesting meaning to vent as well. If you vent your feelings, we use vent for feelings as well. If you vent your feelings, you express them forcefully. And that is usually when you're angry or you're upset. You need to vent. You don't want to explode. You need to vent. So it's kind of the same thing, you know, just like it came from the bombs and rockets. If you don't want the bomb to explode, vent it and it will become a rocket. It will go into the air or at least it will explode somewhere else. And that's the same for your feelings. If you're about to explode, vent your feelings. Talk to somebody, express them even forcefully. That will help you from exploding. So with that aside, back to our word, vent, we use it here for the explosion and rockets, and you know how it is used. Now, the next word is discharge, D-I-S-C-H-A-R-G-E. Now, we said the force of the discharge can be increased or decreased by widening or narrowing the opening. So what is the meaning of discharge then? When there is a discharge of a substance, the substance comes out from inside somewhere. And that is exactly what's happening. We have the substance, the explosive substance coming out, which can be increased or decreased, and that will change the speed and power of the rocket. That is the discharge. And now for our next word, application, A-P-P-L-I-C-A-T-I-O-N. 
We said in the story, as with the 13th century Chinese, the first application of this technology in Europe was in weaponry. Now, that's typical, obviously. Whenever we figure out something new or we invent something or we discover something, the first application is in weaponry. Anyway, what is the meaning of application in this context? The application of a rule or piece of knowledge is the use of it in a particular situation. It's just like how we use it. That is the application. And now for our next word, leverage or leverage. By the way, in British English, they say leverage. In American English, they say leverage. So you will find people say it leverage, leverage. It doesn't matter. It's the same thing. So leverage, L-E-V-E-R-A-G-E. In the text, we said on land, the cannon provided greater leverage for an army because its aim was more precise and its performance more reliable. But our question is, what is a leverage? The cannon provided greater leverage for an army. Now, leverage is the ability to influence situations or people so that you can control what happens. That is the influence, authority, or pull. But there was a problem with cannons, especially when you want to use them on ground. They needed more equipment for launching, and rockets proved too cumbersome to move and set up under fire or in bad weather. Too cumbersome. C-U-M-B-E-R-S-O-M-E. Cumbersome. That's our next word. What does that mean? Something that is cumbersome is large and heavy and therefore difficult to carry, wear, or handle. We can use cumbersome for a system or a process, and that means very complicated and inefficient. Now, we're not saying that this was inefficient, but it was too difficult, too awkward, too heavy, too clumsy at some time. Maybe now, of course, with the vehicles we have, it's a lot easier. But back in the day, using rockets on the battlefield was not that easy. It was difficult to move, difficult to set up, especially under fire or in bad weather. And now for our next word, practical. Now let's see how we use it in context. However, it was at sea that the rocket proved itself to be a practical and effective weapon. When we talk about a practical weapon, Now, when we talk about practical ideas or methods, we're talking about ideas or methods that are likely to be effective or successful in a real situation. And that is what we use to describe the rocket when it was used at sea. It was very practical, especially at the beginning. Now, it is still practical, but it is practical anywhere, unfortunately. Anyway, let's move now to our last word for today's episode, and that is engulf. Let's see how we use it in context. A single rocket could engulf a ship in flames in a matter of minutes. Now, what is the meaning of engulf? E-N-G-U-L-F, engulf. If one thing engulfs another, it completely covers or hides it, often in a sudden and unexpected way. That is engulf. We said the single rocket could engulf a ship in flames in a matter of minutes. Well, makes sense. We could use engulf for feelings or emotions. If a feeling or emotion engulfs you, you are strongly affected by it. With that being said, these are all the words that I wanted to share with you. I hope you enjoyed the subject and I hope you enjoyed those words. But remember, if you want to keep those words in your active vocabulary bank, you need to practice. And we got you covered. You have all the practice you need on our website, EnglishPlusPodcast.com. All you need to do is take the link you can find in the description of the episode. You will go to the custom post we created for this episode. You will find interactive activities, a PDF downloadable worksheet, everything you need to practice and to add these new words to your permanent active vocabulary bank. We are launching our premium services at English Plus starting from next week. So if you want to join us now, if you want to become a premium member of English Plus, you will have a lot of benefits. One of these is going to be a word power course that we're going to start from the beginning of next week. But that will not be everything. We will have other courses, grammar courses, business English courses, and other courses that I will talk about later. And of course, we will have the book club, the exclusive book club, and we will have a lot of other benefits for our premium users. So if you want to have all these benefits, you can also find the link to Patreon in the link of this description. Go to Patreon, become a patron, and obviously become a premium member of English Plus. You will have a lot of benefits. Benefits coming your way for a very small price. With that being said, this is your host, Danny. I would like to thank you very much for listening to another episode from English Plus Podcast. I will see you next time.